Week 13, problem 9. Hydrogen atom in the n equals 3 state decays to the n equals 2 state. What is the wave wavelength of the photon that the hydrogen atom emits? All right, so I'm going to look up hydrogen spectrum. There we go. Ooh, hydrogen spectrum. Ooh, hmm. Let's go hyperphysics and maybe also Wikipedia and maybe just images. Uh, it looks useful. Okay. Balmer series. All right. So let's go back to what we got here. So if I'm going to draw myself a picture, I'm going to have a line, a line, a line. And this will be n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3 energies. So the idea here is you have an electron in its ground state. And they said that we started with one in the third state, which is not the ground state at all. And it goes down to the second state. And the idea here is it lost energy. And as it lost energy, that energy was emitted in the form of a photon. So if I find out what the energy of at 3 is and the energy at 2, then the difference between those will give me a wavelength. So where's the formula? Here's the, no, that's not the formula. Hmm, hmm. Control F, 13.6. No, no, nothing, nothing. Here's what I'm looking for. All right, so the energy at any level is 13.6 divided by n squared. Who did they give it somewhere? Why is that not somewhere? Hmm, hmm. There we go. Energy equals 13.6 electron volts over n squared. Bam. So the way I'm going to say this is the energy level. This is only specific to hydrogen. So don't get too carried away and think that you can rule the universe with this information. Maybe a universe of hydrogen. All right, so there is a lot of hydrogen in the world and everything is made up of protons. All right, so the idea here is if we want to find the energy from three to two, then we're gonna do energy three minus energy two, which equals 13.6 over three squared minus 13.6 over 2 squared, which equals 13.6 of 1 over 9 minus 1 over 4. Simplifying this out, we have 13.6. Hmm, I'm going to call this 436 minus 936, which gives us negative. So we have 13.6, throwing a negative over 5. There we go. And there should be a negative. Yep. So I'm going to do 13.6 times 5 divided by 9. Whoa, times divided by 36. There we go. And that gives us 1.9. Now I'm, going, I'm not going to care about that negative. Make an arrow sign so I don't have to justify myself 1.9 1.9 electron volt all right so the idea here is we can find the energy at any one of these levels at any one of these levels it's going to be 13.6 divided by the level squared so this guy will be 13.6 divided by 2 squared this guy will be 13.6 divided by 3 squared and so forth so just hydrogen so what we did was we found it between the two levels I went to. It went from three to two. So it's going to give up, give off energy because there's more energy for here than it is to here. Um, the idea here is we have a proton over here, which is you know the nucleus. The electron is pulled towards the nucleus, and you have sort of a centripetal, you know, gravity type moon orbiting the Earth instead, like a uh, concept going on here, and so. If the moon suddenly shifted much closer to the Earth, you would um, have a whole bunch of energy change. And that's the idea we have here. That's a very crude analogy, but it's the same concept.
So we got 1.9 electron volts given off. Um, now we need to convert that into a um, wavelength. So it equals energy given off, which is hc over lambda. Therefore, lambda equals hc over energy, which is 1240 electron volts nanometers over 1.9 electron volts. So let's do 1240 divided by answer. And that will give us 656.47. 656.47. Nanometers. Six fifty six point four seven nanometers. And that is the I assume they asked for the wavelength. The wavelength of the photon that the hydrogen emits when an electron decays from n equals three to n equals two. All right. Yep, yeah, that seems reasonable. Well, while in the first excited state. Okay, a hydrogen atom is illuminated by various wavelengths of light. What happens to the hydrogen atom when illuminated by each wavelength? All right, let's see here which can give me the best. Um, Balmer series. So there's like different series. There's like the Balmer series. And I think there's like a Lyman series, which is where it goes from one. So I'm going to go with a Lyman series first. Is there a Lyman? L Y M? Nope. If I go to the Balmer series, it'll show up. Balmer? I can't reach. Okay. Oh, here we go. Here's the Lyman series. So this is the idea. Series name after something Lyman. Hmm. We just cover the spectrum line. Okay. All wavelengths of Lyman are in the ultraviolet band. Okay. So basically, it says that it starts. And equals two. Okay, so it starts at one and it goes up. So it's basically saying that one, the first, it always starts at the first um, first ground level. It goes from the ground level and works its way up. So the, let's see here. I just want the numbers. Yeah, I'll go with this guy. All right. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe this is what I want. Ah, interesting. I'm going to go with this photo right here. All right. So, the first excited state is illuminated by the various wavelengths. So, looking at this guy. Oh, that's what I was thinking wrong. All right, so it's in the first excited state. Excited, i.e. not ground state. So it's in the second, so it's actually going to be in the Balmer series. So the Balmer series is... Oh, it's just there. Oh, it's just there. Oh, wait a second. I can go this way. The Balmer series. This guy. So, looking at this. So if we have 656.5... 656.5 is going to go from the second state to the third state. So, what happens to the hydrogen atom when illuminated by each wavelength? So, this will go go to second state. Uh, to n equals 3. And at n equals 3, it'll give off light. And specifically, the light it'll give off will be this uh, wavelength right here. So it'll give off, it'll, the electron will go up to, th up to the, third excite, the third state and then drop down and it'll give off, it'll jump, it'll go to the third excite, the n equals three, the third energy state or the second excited state, as you would say. All right, then it says, what happens if you hit it with 605? Well, there is 605, so 605 is a shorter wavelength, so it has more energy, but it would be between the uh, n equals 3 and n equals 4. 
And since it has to be quantized, i.e., has to do some, has to hit it almost exactly, maybe exactly. It has to hit it exactly. Otherwise, it won't do some. We'll do nothing. So nothing is going to occur. Nothing will happen here. Um, what I guess the best way to describe it is, is what happens is the photon would come in, it would hit the electron, it would jump up to this state. But since there, it can't be in an intermediate state right here, it drops it back exactly back down to where it started, and therefore re-emits the exact same photon that it just absorbed. That or nothing happens. I'm not even sure if scientists actually know what the correct interpretation is. But the idea is it will not meaningfully interact with 605 because 605 does not exist on this photo. 656 does, so 656 interacts. The 605 will not. All right, 314.9. All right, so if you look at this from the first excited state, the smallest um, uh, energy that we have here is 410. And if you can go out even further, let's see, Balmer, uh, let's see, 314. Yep, so infinity is 364.6. So the electron will go further than infinity. What you're going to do is you're going to ionize this hydrogen atom. So it will, the electron will leave. And I don't actually know what the drop down menu is, so I'm going to say ionize. It will ionize the hydrogen atom because you gave that hydrogen atom, in, you gave that electron enough energy to completely leave orbit. You struck the moon with a comet hard enough that the moon now is gone from Earth's orbit. So that is the idea behind that one. So I know I was a little bit lengthy on there. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, that's all I had to really say about problem nine. So we're gonna move on to problem 10.